Medical ethics is being inverted. Find out about that and more in today's edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston is served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee, as California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. You know, you don't understand choice, what it is, what really happened in Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton, and even in the Dobbs decision. Most Americans think the entire abortion debate is about a woman's choice, or not, but it's neither. It's about the doctor's decision. The doctor is the issue. The killing doctor was licensed to kill another human being. We often get caught up in the emotions that it's a baby human being. But in some ways, that's not the issue. Killing babies isn't what's wrong. Baby dogs, whom we all love. Baby kittens, which are cute. Baby cows, which are really darling. They're killed every day, even though emotionally we may not like that. That's because psychologically we're attracted. It's attachment theory in the psychological realm. And this has been well known for a while. We like young creatures. We're designed to like them emotionally. But the crime of Roe v. Wade wasn't the killing of a younger human being. The crime was killing an innocent human. The humanity was at stake. And with that decision, and for 50 years, even pro-lifers have sidestepped. Doctors have become killers. They are licensed to kill based on what? Not on any overarching principles. Only on the basis of what's in their own mind. That's right. A doctor is licensed ever since 1973 in the United States. Whatever is in his or her personal judgment. They are licensed to actually end a human life. And in the case of abortion, a woman can ask, but it's very clear the decision is the doctor's. The doctor has the choice. In euthanasia, someone can ask, oh, doctor, I can't handle it anymore. It's too much. Would you please just kill me? A patient can ask the power, the action. The decision is entirely in the hands of the physician. And many pro-life individuals are distracted by the emotions of the victims, which, of course, are very powerful emotions, and we need to be aware of them. But the legal issue is who is doing the killing? Who is authorized now to kill in the United States of America? Ironically, it is the physician, the once most honored and trusted profession on earth. In Western civilization, the doctor was the highest rung of society because the doctor promises to sacrifice of himself or herself and never do anything that would harm a patient in any way, much less kill that patient. This has been the backbone of Western civilization, and many people don't understand that salient issue, and it's on us now. And if you don't think so, look around at what's being done in the name of medicine right now. And people are at a loss. Think about it just for a little bit in the news. Think about Dr. Fauci. Think about the many questionable things that are being done to young boys and girls and men and women. The basic medical facts of what a human being is have been thrown out the window. Doctors are considered the ultimate authority, and they need not invoke any other higher power. They have been made professional killers. And that's what happened in Roe and Doe. And if you lose track of that, you will go down the paths of the emotional arguments which the media and the culture use to gaslight you. So the media, yes, we know the media misleads. You need to know the media itself is misled. But even many of our allies don't understand this is not about good women versus bad women. Bad women want to kill their babies, but I'm with the good women. This is a woman's issue. No, this is much deeper. This is a human issue about the role of the most protected and honored profession now killing. So to be effective, we have to recognize what the real issue is. 
I want to remind you, I am glad to and have supported crisis pregnancy centers. They're very, very important. I like it because it's a good thing to do. In fact, there are many, many good things to do. If you're concerned about children being influenced by the culture and wanting to have an abortion, raise your children well, do your very best. That's a good thing to do. It doesn't address intentional legal medical killing, though. And it does feel good when I give donations to a crisis pregnancy center, but my purpose in life is not just to feel good. If you think so, you're deeply mistaken. There are life principles we must understand and follow, and protecting the innocent legally is one of our purposes in society. If I give a donation to help a mom, that's great, but that doesn't stop the law which authorizes intentional medical killing. We'll take a break. We'll come back right after this. You're listening to Life Matters. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I was very excited when I heard about LifeFest Film Festival. LifeFest is the film festival dedicated to showcasing films that affirm the intrinsic worth of innocent human life and the profound significance of each life. I know one of your prizes is the Capra Award, awarded to that production that best reflects Frank Capra's thematic ideal. One seemingly insignificant person can in fact change the whole world in which he or she lives. That one singular life ends up being of vital importance. I'm so glad to hear that you are cherishing that in this film festival and are committed to artfully and creatively protect the lives of those who can't possibly promote themselves. They are dependent on the love and goodwill of people like you to speak on their behalf. Well done. Find out about the exciting cultural change impacting Hollywood. Go to lifefilmfest.com. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back. Uh, If you've been listening, we've been talking about the real meaning of choice. It only authorizes choice, not for the woman. It only authorizes choice only for the killer, the killing doctor. And that's also the case in euthanasia. A woman can ask, but the decision is entirely in the mind and the actions of the attending physician who is about to do what had been a criminal act up until January 22nd, 1973. You know that the Dobbs decision stated clearly, and it was a good thing, that there is no constitutional right for a woman to choose abortion. And that's what Roe v. Wade said. We're going to talk about that. It doesn't really overturn Roe v. Wade. The Dobbs decision of 2022 merely adjusts some aspects of Roe v. Wade. It doesn't overturn it. It actually doesn't change what happened. Before 1973, no doctor was ethically nor legally allowed to kill a human baby. No doctor was allowed to intentionally kill any human being. The Hippocratic Oath had guided our laws as they were formed in the several states, had guided our laws, and even on the federal level, Henry Hyde's prohibition on government funding of abortion. It's because it's a human being. It's the Hippocratic Oath that guided our civilization for more than two millennia, and that's what was destroyed in Roe and Doe. It's very important to understand that if we're going to change our culture, we have to speak to the real issue. By the way, just think about it. If you have cancer and you're feeling sick and your doctor doesn't tell you you have cancer, but gives you Tums, gives you something for your stomach ache, hopefully you'll feel better. Oh, thanks, doctor. I feel better. As a society, our goal is not to make us feel better about the Roe and Doe decision about abortion. And well, if I just give money to this mom right now, well, she'll feel better and I'll feel better. It feels good to give. It is more blessed to give than receive. That's wonderful. That's not addressing the issue of intentional killing. That is actually a form of social work. We're helping people in need. That was done before Roe v. Wade in the 40s and 50s. I personally know many people who were adopted They were adopted before Roe v. Wade because people intervened and helped that mom. That's a good thing to do. And when you do it, it does feel good. It does not address the sweeping, sweeping change in your society that many people don't understand. 
Doctors are killers. They're unrestrained under the law. That's why abortion has actually increased since the Dobbs decision. That's why medicine, actual pharmacological medicine, is now being used to intentionally kill, intentionally kill, and harm the mother. But that's happening more since the Dobbs decision. Many people think, oh, hooray, Rose overturned, we've won, we've won. That is the most simplistic, emotionally based understanding. You're called to maturity. You're called to understand the real cultural war going on around you. You're called to participate. But if you don't understand what the law did, not just regarding abortion of cute babies, what the law did to your society and the medical profession, if you don't understand that, then you're going to inherit all of the hellish things that were released. It was literally a Pandora's box of medical destruction that was released January 22nd, 1973. And again, just think about it right now, some of the moral and ethical debates that the medical profession is facing and the media wants to distort with emotions and feelings and not have you think about what's being done to your fellow human beings. You've got to cut through the fog. And that's one of our goals here at Life Matters. What is the real issue? So please pay attention. I'm going to read to you now from the Roe v. Wade decision and the Doe v. Bolton decision. Please listen and understand. First of all, on the very simplistic argument, which many people accepted as the basic argument for pro-abortion thinking, the Supreme Court under Justice Blackmun, and I'm going to quote directly from Justice Blackmun, said, no, you don't have the right to control your own body, even if this was supposedly part of the woman's body. He's explicit. And this is in Roe v. Wade itself. At section 154, he says, quote, the privacy right involved cannot be said to be absolute. In fact, it is not clear to us that's what's asserted that one has an unlimited right to do with one's body as one pleases bears any close relationship to the right of privacy. The court has refused to recognize an unlimited right of this kind in the past. That is in Roe v. Wade. That is in the arguments for Roe v. Wade from Justice Blackmun. Again, continuing in Roe v. Wade. In Roe v. Wade, 410 U.S., section 163, line 163, quote, the attending physician, in consultation with his patient, is free to determine without regulation by the state that in his medical judgment, the patient's pregnancy should be terminated. If that decision is reached, the judgment may be effectuated by an abortion free of interference by the state. Close quote. A doctor is free. Yeah, the woman can consult. The woman can ask. The doctor's going to do it based on personal, personal, not based on overarching authority, not based on statute, not based on regulation or the Hippocratic Oath, based only on their supreme, brilliant mind. The doctor, as many nurses say and humorously, the doctor is MD, a minor deity. If they want to do it, they're free to do it. And that's in Roe v. Wade. Again, in Roe v. Wade, at line 164, quote, The decision vindicates the right of the physician to administer medical treatment according to his professional judgment. Again, at 166, the abortion decision in all its aspects is inherently and primarily a medical decision. And basic responsibility for it must rest with the physician, period, close quote. That's in Roe v. Wade. Blackman and the Supreme Court said doctors can do whatever they want, including killing their fellow human beings. Yes, they're baby human beings. I like babies. I like cute babies. But the reason it's wrong is not because it's a baby. It's because it's a human being. And the decision of Roe v. Wade threw out the Hippocratic Oath. It threw it out. And that's what has changed your culture. And if you don't recognize and address that, you will be chasing emotional butterflies. we got to get more help. I hate to say this. There are many pro-lifers who say, well, we'll change this because we'll fund crisis pregnancy centers even more. We'll have the government fund them. That's it. That'll be a pro-life vote. If the government votes to fund crisis pregnancy centers, that's going to end abortion. And my friends, it is not. That is basically social work. Lyndon Johnson proved 
Oh, by handing out goodies from the government. It'll be a great society. And if a girl's not married, that's okay, according to Lyndon Johnson in the 1960s. Let's have the government take care of these, quote, problem babies. Babies are not problems. And you've heard this many times. There's no good reason to kill a human baby because there are people willing to care for that child. The reality is that the government has authorized that killing. And very often, the pregnant woman, if she is single, if she's not getting good sound advice from the medical profession, which is why it's there, by the way, the purpose of the medical profession is to help their fellow human beings. But if she doesn't know what to do, she is emotionally confused. Many, many times, that girl on that operating table, her feet in the stirrups, she has no idea exactly what's going on. She doesn't fully comprehend. Her emotions are guiding her. And at the other end of life, many patients, and I've known many, when they have a serious illness, they're entirely dependent emotionally, as well as physically, on the goodwill and care of the medical professionals. And they will go through, I promise you will go through, emotional trauma when you realize that time is coming for you. You won't know what's the best decision. You don't know the full depths of your illness. As I said earlier, if a doctor says, well, take this for your tummy, it'll make you feel better. And taking Tums when the real issue is cancer is merely making you feel better. But it's worse because now doctors are authorized to say, well, take this. It's not just fentanyl. It's going to put you down forever. It's not just going to kill your pain. It's going to kill you. And then you won't have to feel this anymore. Isn't that kind? That is happening now. But the decision on what to offer and whether or not medicine will be used to kill is not the patient's. The patient can even ask. The authority to kill comes from that doctor. And that was prohibited for millennia. That's what defined a kind Western society where we're told no one should kill. By the way, you think about this. Why is it that doctors had to swear they would never kill? How come plumbers don't swear they will never kill? How come ballerinas, I mean, be very messy to kill if you're a ballerina. You'd get blood on your tutus, and that would be terrible. So shouldn't that be an explicit oath that ballerinas take or plumbers? No, they don't, because they don't deal with human beings at their most vulnerable. One profession in your society deals with vulnerable human beings who are asking for help and don't know what to do. Only one profession, what had been a sacred profession, a sacred oath, where the higher angels of our nature ruled that entire profession, the physician. The physician had been set aside by the Hippocratic Oath. Before the oath came into existence, by the way, and many, many cultural anthropologists agree, the doctor was a witch doctor and was free to use their knowledge and their gobbledygook and use strange language to do what they wanted with their patients. And they could be motivated by whoever paid them. Just as now, if the physician is paid by an HMO, if the physician is paid by the government and told, you can only spend so much money, the doctor will be forced to do what many witch doctors did, which was actually poison patients. And there's no ethical prohibition. It was the prohibition that went back even before the time of Christ. That's when Western civilization was being birthed. When you had a culture that said, you don't kill the innocent. You protect the innocent from the miscreant. That is the premise of your society, but many have lost that premise. You must fight for that premise, not for the emotions of how cute babies are. And babies are cute. And mommies are awesome. I love seeing pregnant moms. It's something about the man and me. I want to protect them. So emotionally, that's a very good thing. But it's a good thing that isn't addressing the actual legal evil that was released. And the Dobbs decision doesn't address that. The Dobbs decision doesn't address the question of medical killing. The Dobbs decision didn't address many of the aspects. Before Dobbs, which came down in June of 2022, supposedly overturning, well, it didn't stop a single abortion. Even though Roe had thrown open for all abortions, Dobbs didn't stop a single abortion. Dobbs merely said, well, you people who can vote why don't you just go ahead and vote on it? 
And people don't understand what it is. It is the ethics of medicine, the most important profession of your society. It's not about how much we feel good about babies. Feelings must be set aside for clarity. You must think with clarity about what was authorized and therefore what must legally be restrained. That is the key to our debate. It is absolutely essential. You have been gaslit. You've been gaslit by a dishonest media and, to be honest, a very confused media. Much of the lies and distortion is because they themselves are trained to not think clearly. They have emotional arguments which they are using. The specific laws that were changed were the laws of medicine, the parameters on medicine, and it's critically important that you understand that. Finally, I want to remind you that Justice Robert Jackson, not Katanji Jackson, but Justice Robert Jackson, after World War II, people wanted to just be done, be defeated the Nazi, we proved they're wrong. Now we have to fight the communists. So why do you want to have these trials? Well, the Nuremberg trials weren't just for the Nazi leaders. Justice Robert Jackson understood what happened in Nazi Germany. They didn't kill Frenchmen and, you know, the Netherlanders and uh, invade Poland. That wasn't their highest crime. But in fact, the crime was against their own people. They used laws in Germany to kill innocent Germans, their fellow citizens, their fellow human beings. And Justice Jackson insisted there be a separate and distinct Nuremberg medical trials where doctors who had sworn to the oath were intentionally violating it for the sake of those who were paying them, for the sake of what the government wanted. Those medical trials were clear, and that's what was violated January 22, 73. The criminal actions of doctors must be seen, recognized, and addressed if you're truly pro-life. And there's lots of good things to do that are tangential. I do them too. They do feel good. But without clarity, without insight, without resolve, we cannot bring an end to this culture of death and culture of killing. Life Matters continues after this. You know about our car donation program at California Pro-Life. We use one of the most respected programs in the nation. Go to the California Pro-Life page, californiaprolife.org. Scroll to the bottom and click on Donate My Car. It's that easy. Did you know you can also donate any vehicle, boat, motorhome, or even personal property? If you are nearing retirement age, you can also get a tax deduction by earmarking a portion of your upcoming compulsory distributions from your 401k. Just email us for information. California Pro-Life is fighting to equip California Pro-Lifers with understanding and the tools to again protect the unborn and other vulnerable innocents. Thank you for your help in this battle. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. That's CaliforniaProLife.org for more information. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. I want to tell you about some things that I am doing and you should know more about. Now, many of you know me, Brian Johnston. You know my background in the right to life. And you know, I've written numerous books about the right to life and what it really means, and what it really is. You know, for example, from my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, that it was Doe v. Bolton that actually authorized the killing of babies, not Roe v. Wade. Again, feel free to read that sometime. But it's Doe v. Bolton that said, women don't have the right to choose, they can only ask. Doe v. Bolton, specifically, it's the companion decision to Roe v. Wade, and it's rarely examined or talked about, but it's the killing part of it. Doe v. Bolton said, only doctors can do an abortion and say when and where it should happen. Only doctors should kill. In fact, doctors, even though the Hippocratic Oath prevented them from killing human babies, and other human beings, now they will. And it's their judgment alone that is the standard of when and where to kill these baby humans. This is hugely significant. Again, I want to have you listen to Justice Ginsburg. And Justice Ginsburg agrees and spells out the real facts that Dovey Bolton's statement 
about medicine is the killing aspect of the Roe v. Wade, Doe v. Bolton companion decisions. They're both referred to as Roe, but they're tied together, conjoined like twins. And Doe v. Bolton says, doctors can throw out the Hippocratic Oath. Doctors are free to kill human babies now. They'll be the only authorized killers. Listen to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Another uh, feature of Roe is Roe really isn't about the woman's choice, is it? It's about the doctor's freedom to practice his profession as he thinks best. It wasn't woman-centered. It was physician-centered. Thank you, Ruth. And so you know that it's important to understand what's happened to medicine. And I go into great depth on that. Many of you know that I have served as a commissioner on aging in California because I have seen that it's vulnerable human beings that doctors now kill. Yes, they kill vulnerable human babies. They do it, and they do it because they have that power to do it. But you need to know the Hippocratic Oath was thrown out. It wasn't just that they killed babies. The reason it was wrong in Roe and Doe. These are human being babies. It's the killing of the human being that's wrong. And this is critically important. You understand the principles of medicine and the principles of Western civilization. That's what's at stake. So I have a separate project, a program that is called The Call to Maturity. And it also has a separate guidelines for you and your family and friends called Older, Wiser, Stronger. Regardless of your age, you're called to maturity. And I have to tell you this because I've studied this now at length. I'm not an MD, but I know many doctors. You've heard them on this program. You can restore your strength even if you're 70. Your diet, your habits, you can actually restore your strength if you take principles and apply them to your body. If you simply surrender, well, I don't feel like it. Or, and perhaps the worst, is your own attitude. If you have the wrong attitude about aging and maturity, you can really cause yourself a lot of problems and cause your loved ones a lot of problems. And so go to brianjohnston.net. That's where I link all these things together and let you know about the other things I'm doing, where I'm speaking and other opportunities to be involved in helping us change the world and preserve what is right and just and true. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council. 